Glory to Jesus. We greet everyone that we're peace of the Lord Jesus. Amen. In reverence to reading the word of the Lord, I'd like to invite those who can to stand up. We're going to read in two books the word of the Lord tonight. Matthew. Matthew 24. From verse 29. And then we're going to read <coughs> First Thessalonians 4, 16. 16. And now we're going to read first from, from Matthew 24, verse 29. Thus says the word of the Lord. Matthew 24, from verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven, and the power of the heaven will be shaken. Then the, sun, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of trumpet. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now in the book of Thessalonians, chapter 4, from verse 16, it says the following. Four sixteen. It's already here uh, on the projection. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a sound, with a shout, with the voice of archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then when who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And those and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now the church may be seated.
Amém. Glória a Jesus. Glória a Jesus. My brethren, the first book that we read tonight, Matthew, it speaks that it says that soon after the affliction of those days, the sun will grow darker, the the moon is go not going to sh shine its light, as heaven not going to fall to the ground, and uh, there are going to be earthquakes. We are. We're speaking of days of pain and trials and also a glorious day. Because this day is going to be a great and terrible day of the Lord. We also read on the other book in Thessalonians. It also speaks that this day, the day when the Lord is going to come down from heaven, is going to come down with a shout with the voice of archangels and with the trumpet of God. And in the other verse that is in the book of Revelations, it is related to what the Lord Jesus is saying in Matthew. Revelations 8, 12. It says the following. And the fourth angel sounded the trumpet and it was the third part of the ground was hurt, the third part of the moon, the third part of the stars, so that the third part of them may would go darker, and the third part of the late the day would not shine, and similarly and the midnight. So all those texts the texts that we just read, they speak about the trumpet. But when we look on the book of Revelations, it was written seven trumpets, seven trumpets. And we know every, uh, on the Christian world, evangelical world, we know that, that three trumpets have already sounded. The third part of the, the green of the earth have already been sounded. The first trumpet, the second trumpet, the life at, at sea was was destroyed, was even confirmed by Jacques Cousteau in 1970. The majority here was not even born. <laughs> and the third trumpet speaks, says that the, the water would grow uh, bitter and also related to the event that happened in the former Soviet Union, Chernobyl. So there were three trumpets that have already sounded. But Apostle Paul, there in the first Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52, he says the following. In a moment, in a opening and closing of an eye, before the last trumpet, because the trumpet will sound and the dead will resurrect in, in an incorruptible way and will also be transformed. So those four verses, they approach the same topic. The moment of the fourth trumpet is the moment of the last trumpet for the church. So the last chance that I have to go to heaven to inherit eternity. So it is related to a sign that is going to happen on the sun, the moon, and the stars. When the people of God left Egypt to walk towards the promised land, God gave them ten signs so that through those ten signs they would be able to schedule and get ready for the departure from Egypt and for their walk towards the promised land. Today, in the morning, we, in the Sunday school, we spoke about the, the two trumpets, the silver trumpets that the Lord has ordered Moses to be made, and each one of those trumpets had a different sound. 
sometimes they would be sounded together or sometimes they would be sounded separate and there are moments where there were um, shorter bursts on the, the sound of the trumpets and uh, this, those specific sounds were for the conclamation of the people or for a day of celebration of the people sometimes it was, was a call to repentance or also to for people to uh, raise a camp to prepare for war to beginning of the month the arrival of the new moon or the new year was sounded at the beginning of every biblical Jewish feast yeah, at the beginning of each month and it was also sounded it was registered and the word was for the ordination or for the anointing of a king there in First Kings, the book First Kings, when King David, he gives order for his son, Solomon, to be crowned as king over Israel. The word of the Lord writes the following, call Zadok, his, uh, the priest, and Nathan the prophet, uh, the, the Bible is uh, is written like this and and place Solomon up on top of the donkey and bring him there and there you will anoint him king over Israel and then you will sound the trumpet and you will shout heal the king so the sounding of the trumpet was also for the coronation of the son of the king for the coronation of the king so that when this, the trumpet would sound they would all be able to say hail the king hail the king hail the king jesus amen because there there was a priest there was a prophet and the king and jesus is the priest he is a prophet and he is the king of kings the lord of lords blessed be the name of the lord and they used the trumpet to announce and from that moment forward, there was a new king over Israel. And the fourth trumpet is also to announce that the kingdom of our God, Lord and Savior, is alive. Because Jesus is returning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Today, my brethren, is a day for us to sound the trumpet. It is also for Israel. Because today... It is, is, is being celebrated the new year, the Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. Uh, you can't say it because I'm not very good with English and Hebrew. Rosh Hashanah, that's, that's what it is, Rosh Hashanah. This day, <laughs> the Jews celebrate as, as this, the Feast of the Trumpets. The Rosh Hashanah, the, the sister said that, that the new year, Jewish New Year, it was known the Feast of the Trumpets. And then as time passed by, they began to call it Rosh Hashanah, which is the new year, Jewish New Year, and start today and go all the way to Friday. So it's, it's the Feast of the Trumpets. But for Israel, the trumpets, they all had their meaning. Uh, what I just said, so to prepare for the war, for uh, solemn uh, assembly, to raise up the camp or to establish a camp, to get ready for the war, for to wait for a decision from the Lord. And also the peop Jewish people, before the silver trumpets, they used another instrument. The nom was the horn of a goat. And this, this lamb was called shofar. It was also used to do all of these things there I just mentioned here. For, to call for a solemn assembly, a moment of celebration, a joy for Israel, a call to congregate. But because why was it used uh, the horn of a goat in Brazil? Many are here in Brazil. In Brazil, we use the horn of a bull, and we have uh, like a 
the, this uh, trumpet that we use in Brazil to take care of uh, livestock. But in Israel, the horn needs to be the horn of a goat and this uh, of a lamb, and that has a, a mini. And the living God, when Abraham went to sacrifice his son on the, Mont, the Moria Mount, Isaac had noticed that he needed at that moment a rescue, a deliverance. So now he approached the father and says, Father, here is the kindle. There is, there is a fire, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? Where is the lamb for the sacrifice? Where is the lamb for the sacrifice? And Abraham, he answered to his son, God will provide for himself the lamb. So when Jesus came, John the Baptist pointed to Jesus and said, and said the following, Here is the Lamb of God that take the sin away from the world. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And at that day, it was not, it was not a lamb that was sacrificed. On that day, it was a goat. Lamb was a, 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 a lamb was an animal that was uh, one year that was raised as a, a child in a family, and they used this lamb was used once a year to be sacrificed, and the the blood would just uh, will atone for the sin of the entire family. And when Israel was living in Egypt, they would place the blood on the, on the doorposts and in the windows, and it was. Uh, a lamb that was got caught by the horns, and this this lamb was was the, the substitute to substitute uh, was to Isaac, and that's why the Jewish people use the horn of the lamb because the horn of the lamb proclaims the salvation. They proclaim the deliverance. They proclaim the forgiveness of God, the grace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God. Because when they sounded the, the trumpet with the horn of a lamb, he w they were proclaimed that someone else died instead of Isaac. And somebody died on the uh, people of Israel uh, as a replacement to the people of Israel. And they use a shofar also in the temple. And the voice that comes out of the Lamb, which is the voice of the Holy Spirit of God, to give us deliverance, to bring us salvation, to make us aware of the moment in which we are living, so that we can gather up and congregate, because the day of the return of the Lord is coming soon, is written in the Word of God. My brethren, so the Lord speaks of a moment, of a different day, a day of pain, affliction, and suffering, a terrible day. But the Lord also speaks of deliverance. He speaks of redemption. He speaks of salvation. And He says, when those things take place, there will also it will also appear in heaven, a sign of the Son of Man. And all the tribes on the earth will lament. And when you look in the book of Revelations, you, you read, I saw people from every nation, tribe, and nation, and, and tongue. They were before the Lamb, dressed up with uh, white garments. And they washed their the garments and whited white it up with the blood of the Lamb. And they got ready for the arrival of their Lord, their God, their, their Savior. But a great part of the tribes of the earth, of the nation of the earth, will lament. And why are, are they going to lament? Because they lost the opportunity of being saved. Because they have rejected the grace, the love, and the favor and the mercy of God. So then uh, it came upon them the judgment of God. So then you see the Son of Man. You will see. But you 
but they will see, but they are not going to be able to be with him. And that's what's going to be the great judgment. Moses saw the land, but was not able to enter into the promised land. Because the Lord told him not to, to hit uh, the rock, but just to touch the rock. And he disobeyed the Lord. And the, every eye will see Jesus come in the clouds. But they will lament because they are not going to be able to be with him. And that's the judgment of God. And he will come with might and great glory. Because every power, every glory, every honor, every praise will be given to him. And he says more, my brethren. And he will send his angels with a loud sound of trumpet. A harsh sound of trumpet. What is something harsh? Is something solid? Something that is not flexible? Something that cannot be changed? It's something that is terrible. The harsh sound of the trumpet. Because they have been warned. Every day we are saying, Maranatha, what does that mean? Jesus is returning. But I need to get ready for this day. When will it be? When will it be the great day? We are already living those days. The days are coming close on the return of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We sing this song, Get Ready, Israel to meet with your God. And the plea of, of this night is so that we may, uh, the church may get ready. Prepare, prepare my brother and sister, you, my brother and sister who is in this place, get ready, Pastor Sabado, because at any moment we'll be uh, presented before the altar of the Lord. It's time for us to get ready with uh, your shoulders uh, dressed up and with the lamps light up, lit up it is a moment for the departure to, for, so that we can meet with the Lord in, in heaven and the Lord is going to send his angels to sound the trumpet and three of them had already sounded and they will gather up their chosen from the four winds from one to the other side of heaven so the Lord is gathering up His people. The church of the Lord is being gathered up from the four corners of the earth to be with the Lord in His eternity. And my brethren, the word of the Lord says that this Jesus, this Lord, He will come down from heaven with a loud sound the sound of the trumpet is a conclamation for war. What a, sh what a shout here is a plea for war. Because at this moment, a battle is being fought in heaven for your life, for our lives, so that we may enter into eternity with the sound of archangel. He's going to send his angels. But, with, but the voice are going to be the voice of an archangel. What does that mean? Voice of an archangel with a shout, the shout of war, with the sound of archangel. You know why, my brother? Because the angel comes to deliver a message. And you know what the archangel does? The archangel executes the message. So now it's a moment to execute the message. The Word of God is a power, is the whole authority. That's why the Lord has power and authority. So it's going to be a solemn meeting. It's a holy conclamation. And once again, the trumpet of God. Why? Because at this time, the trumpet of the Lord is being sounded. The Lamb that was dead is now alive. 
and he is, has spoken to us. He is speaking to you tonight. And the time of our departure is near. He will come from heaven with the sound of archangel, with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Your family member who died in the presence of the Lord, he will raise again. He will rise again. And we will meet with him or her in the clouds and to live in eternity with God. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, to be forever with the Lord. My brethren, that's the purpose of the death of the Lamb, to deliver, to deliver you from the second death, to give you another chance not to participate on the terrible day, but to participate on the great day of the Lord. The trumpets are being sounded. At any moment, this, the sign of the Son of Man is going to take place, and at any, any moment, the angels of the Lord will gather up His chosen from the four corners, corners of the earth to be with the Lord forever in eternity. And you who are here tonight uh, has heard the sound of the shofar, the sound of the, the voice of the Lamb, the voice of the Holy Spirit, the desire of the Lord is that, is that you participate on this event, on the return of the Messiah, the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And what do you need to do in order to participate on this? It is to accept Jesus as your only and sufficient Savior and to recognize that in the blood of Jesus, in the blood of Jesus, all your sins are being forgiven. And so that you re may recognize that in Jesus, tonight you are restoring your relationship with God, and He's giving you a place in heaven, an opportunity for you to live in His eternity with Him. The first day of the new year in the Jewish calendar, which is today, is also a day of repentance. The Jews, they reserve this day to repent of all the, the evil things they may have done during, during this year. And when people ask the disciples of Jesus what is necessary for them to be saved, and Peter say, he answered, repent and convert. Tonight is a night of repentance. Tonight is a night of conversion. Tonight is the night of salvation. The Lord is giving you this blessing to you, my brother and sister. You who entered here to the house of the Lord. Because the day of the Lord is coming, is near, is coming closer. And at any moment, the Bible says that in a twinkling of an eye. It is very quick. You don't even have, to have time to get ready at that moment. And the Blink your eye. It's a fraction of a second. No one can get ready in such a short period of time for such an important event like this. So you, my brother and sister, if today you hear the voice of God, do not harden your heart. Jesus died for your life and He is alive. And that at any moment He may return, He will return to take you to take His church the church is getting ready and has heard the voice of the Lord, the voice of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus surely will return. Soon he will return. And he says more, I am at the door and I knock if somebody hears my voice. Was it what is written? I will open the door and I will enter and I will have supper with you and he with me. So open up the door of your heart. Jesus is returning and He's knocking at the door of your heart so that you may today open up your heart for Him and open up your heart for salvation and for the redemption of your soul. Open up for the forgiveness of your sins. Open up your heart so that your name may be written in the book of life. Because the 
the Jewish New Year is also for this. We, you, we greet each other here with the peace of the Lord. But they use an expression that's similar to this. On the New Year, Jewish New Year, they say, May your name be written in the Book of Life. My brother and sister, may this be a new year for you, a new day for you. And that from this day forward, your name may be written in the Book of Life. Amen. So let us sing a song. to God. Hallelujah. The Lord has shown a woman that for a very long time she has gathered water in a cistern and this well has dried up and one day the water will dry up. Also. The resources for this life, my brother and sister, one day they will extinguish because everything was created by God to exist for a determined period of time. So the Lord is showing that there is a fount, there was a cistern, a place where you go to pick up water to satisfy your, your 
thirst to quench your thirst and to wash up but this is over and tonight the Lord is offering you to you my sister not only a new sister a new well but is offering you the fount of living waters this a Samaritan woman she went to pick up water on the well she went there at noon because she was very thirsty and Jesus told her if you drink of the water that I give you you never thirst again come from the water that I will give you will bring up a water fount that will blow that will flow and will jump to eternal life and this fount which is the water of the living water which is the Lord of Jesus the Lord Jesus is going to jump to eternal life and so that you will participate on the rapture on the return of the Lamb and will satisfy all your needs and also the Lord has shown a man that has noticed the Sun he has looked to the sky has noticed that the Sun every day rises up and it beams its light and lights up the entire earth and he sees every night then uh, the Sun come go down and every day goes up and go down and he had noticed this movement of the Sun and he was understanding that I don't know I didn't understand a little part here but he was not having he was didn't understand that and one day it would it would come to an end this Sun was going to stop rising up for him but he was not aware of this but tonight the Lord has brought him to this place and is telling you my son pay attention to this and now God's asking a question to this brother are you ready for the day when the Sun is going to stop shining upon your life get ready prepare O Israel to meet with your God because the Sun will grow darker the moon is not going to give it out this light and the the stars of heaven are going to be shaken and the Lord Jesus has spoken this and it was registered not only in Matthew but also in Revelations this is going to happen on the sounding for us of the last trumpet which is the fourth trumpet
uh, we invite the church to stand up. We're going to have a glorification to our God. What's the name? We we'll praise you, Lord, because we are happy people, Lord. Because we know the place that we are going to. Let's be your name, Lord. For your promise, for our heart. Praise you in the name of Jesus. Eternal Father, we praise you and give thanks to you, Lord. We're thankful for this moment, especially for this moment of fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We praise the Holy Name, Lord, because at any, any moment, the great shofar, the great trumpet will be sounded and we will meet together with your Son in the clouds and we'll be together with you forever in your eternity, Lord. We praise you and glorify your Holy Name because your grace, your love, and your mercy is the reason why we are in your presence, Lord. Glorified to be in your name, Lord, because we are your people lamb of your pasture because we have an inheritance in heaven and we have a place in your eternity we praise you for the sacrifice of our lord and savior jesus christ because he is alive lord because he is constantly speaking with us getting us ready for one day to meet with you in your eternity take us home in peace deliver us from any evil bless lord each person who is here visit your church manifest your grace your love your favor lord your mercy and lord place on the heart of each one of us lord the desire to be in, in heavenly jerusalem the desire to enter into the holy uh, land through the gates lord and to inhabit with you in eternity take us home to to our homes in peace we say in the name of jesus and we say wonderful grace and the love of uh, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in the love of and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. The church may, may be seated. You, my brother and sister, who are with us, you are welcome to the house of the Lord. If there is someone that is interested to know about this return of the Lord Jesus, or the sound of the trumpet of God, the shofar, the moment in which the church is, is leaving. If you want a clarification about this, participate with us every Tuesday, every Thursday at 8 p.m. On Saturday, we have a meeting with the women at 6 o'clock, and also Saturday, another service of qualification of the Lord at 7.30 p.m. And on Sunday, we have specially, we have our Sunday school, and it is very important, it is important that you participate also, so that you may have the knowledge about the moment in which we are living. The Sunday school is the sounding of a trumpet, it's an alert, it is awakening, an awakening for the moment in which the faithful church is living. And once again, the rapture is going to take place in the blink of an eye, Twinkle of an eye. You don't even have time to get ready for the moment of the rapture. You need to get ready first. So now, prepare Israel to meet with your God. Jesus is at the door. And you have been listening to this for more than 2,000 years. But the signs are for this moment in which we are living. The trumpets have already sounded. There's only one left for us for the church. And I tell you, my brother and sister, this is the last chance. That's why we're persisting. There are people that have a second return, a third and fourth return of Jesus, and that doesn't exist. You either go with the church or you will be left behind in the moment of the rapture. If you are not participating in the rapture, rapture is, is, means like being taken away with, by force and in a violent way. It's very quick. If, you, if I don't participate in this moment, there is not going to be a second chance for my life. So this is a moment for us to be alert. You who are with, the, with us here every Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning, have a Sunday school to 
approach this topic exactly, the reconstruction of our spiritual life so that we may enter into heaven and so that we may be with the Lord in His eternity. You, my brother and sister, you are all invited and you are being conclaimed for this, for those events. And if you desire a prayer for a life, a qualification regarding the message, the the spiritual gifts and the moment in which we are, the brethren are here to give you the proper assistance. Amen.